there's a lot you can do in this town You set it up and turn it around We might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you know Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host, guys. Thanks for joining us in our 20th season here on Grassroots Community Network. We're each week here live in Aspen, Colorado, Tuesday afternoon at 3.30. And thanks to our live audience for tuning in today on YouTube and Facebook. We feature inspirational locals from up and down the Roaring Fork Valley. It's not called the Aspen Valley, by the way, guys. It's the Roaring Fork Valley. Let's get that right. Let's also get Highland Bowl right. <laughs> There's no S except for the ones you make with your skis in Highland Bowl. Uh, but we hear these kind of things. We're here to get the record straight. I'm really excited to bring back a guest we feature for the first time this summer. It's Lisa Rigsby-Peterson, Executive Hi, Director from the Wheeler Opera House. Welcome back, Lisa. Thanks. It's great to be back. It's great to see you, and Thank happy you. holidays. Same to you. It's been pretty festive so far. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? It was very nice, yes, very nice, and then came back and just looked at the weather forecast. It's going to snow, it's going to snow, so it's good. <laughs> now it really feels, well, people are starting to think about holidays and oh. thinking about how we're going to celebrate, so I'm happy to talk to you about some of the things we're doing at the Wheeler to help celebrate the holidays. But first, Lisa, yes. as a Colorado native, mm -hmm. you grew. were you born in Blackhawk? Uh, I grew we moved, sent, not quite a native, close enough. Okay. Grew up in Central City and Evergreen. Okay, Central yes. City. That's right. I knew it was one of the. It's well, the, it's, it's up the hill a little one bit. One of the one Park. of the gambling towns, but when you yeah. lived there, it wasn't was Central not. City. Just a small mm -hmm. town and kind of in into the mountains there. Taffy making store, the rock polishing shop. Yep, that was it. So okay, so as a longtime Coloradan, what are some of your favorite things about winter in terms of activities? or adventures or outdoor exercise? What do you love the most? Well, since I spent a lot of time in Evergreen, ice skating on a big old lake oh, is my absolute favorite thing. I love that. I, yes, I have the best memories. Uh, you know, they, almost the entire lake in Evergreen freezes over, so it's this huge expanse. And oh. we would have our ice skates in our lockers, and after school we just cut through the golf course and then go ice skating for hours. So absolutely, that's that's my favorite winter activity. So now, since we don't have a lake, I mean, Root Eye is available sometimes for yeah. ice skating. There All was right. just Haven't an article in the Aspen Daily News last weekend mm -hmm. about what happens at Root Eye the other half of the year when it freezes up. Yeah. And you get the right conditions. It can be, you know, with, without the snow on top. So do you, where do you get your, like, skating fix, like, locally? Well, I'm still looking. I'm really excited. I hear that you can, uh, T Lazy 7 has snowmobiles that take you up to Maroon Lake. And yeah. there might be a little bit of skating opportunity there. That's true. It, yeah, you're spoiled when you have an entire gigantic lake to, oh, to skate on. So I've been to some of the resort rinks, and they're just a little small. But I love hiking in, yeah. in the wintertime. Um, you know, just the, the pine trees and the green and the, and the white and the snow, and just the way yeah. everything smells. It's amazing. Uh, what about snowshoeing? Like, ever hike with snowshoes I on? have I have done it a couple of times. I hear okay. there are some really good guides in the valley who uh, can help with it. There might that. be a couple. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I love it. I, I love it. That's so fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, for anyone who enjoys hiking or walking yes. or running, certainly, mm -hmm. any of these kind of activities. I, I happen to be a snowshoe guide mm -hmm. now for 28 years. It's, yeah. it's so fun because it's like, and now in the new technology, our snowshoes from Crescent Moon are actually EVA foam. Oh. It'd be like kind of like the thick you know underside of your running shoe wow and so you're walking on foam on powder mm -hmm. on aspen champagne powder mm -hmm. it's like walking on a cloud you know no no cliche or pun and you know it's just it's just such a wonderful feeling yeah. um mm -hmm. a little cush in your step you know and it's just a lot of fun to go explore you know some of your favorite hiking trails mm -hmm. that normally wouldn't be accessible right by even skis but snowshoes you can kind of go anywhere and all you need is snow I'll have to try that up Castle Creek again. We went up to Ashcroft last uh, last oh, winter, and that was wonderful. That's a, a couple great coyotes spot. in the in the field. We uh, sort of steered clear of them, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's some good spots, and then we like to take people on Richmond Ridge. We were talking mm -hmm. a little before the show. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful snowshoeing spot. Ride the gondola up, go back on the ridge, check out amazing views, mm -hmm. beautiful rolling terrain, which is also nice. Yes. 
and the lunch at the Sun Deck is an option afterwards, which oh, is nice. just such a great like half day adventure. For sure, I'll have to check that out. So if we can ever help, Sun Dog Athletics, Got uh, it. or if you ever want to borrow some snowshoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, I appreciate Happy that. Happy to do that. So yeah. Lisa, we're gonna take a quick break, and then we're gonna get to the programming coming up at the Wheeler, which sure. is unbelievable. I've got some asterisks against some of my favorite shows coming up. <laughs> All right. Uh, but there's so many great ones. We do want to thank our winter underwriters for making this series happen. Mid-November to mid-April, paralleling the ski season. See how I did that? I barely could say it. But paralleling our ski season, we've got the Haiti Children organization. We've got Highlands Ale House, Klug Properties, Paradise Bakery, Pickin County Solid Waste Center, Red Brick Center for the Arts, where we are here with Grassroots TV, Susie's Consignment Aspen, Sundog Athletics, I still got to check my cheat sheet, the Wheeler Opera House, and White River Overland. We're going to go to our only met, our break of the show, guys. We'll be back in two minutes with Lisa Rigsby-Peterson from the Wheeler Opera House and all the programming coming up for the holidays, so don't go away. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Want to live like a local? Help us reduce food waste, a major contributor to climate change. You can help in three simple ways. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Buy ugly fruits and vegetables. Reduce, Reduce food, food waste. waste. Live, Live like, like a, a local. local. Red Brick Center for the Arts is Aspen's hub for creative activity, offering youth and adult art classes, gallery exhibitions, artist studios, and nonprofits. You can take a class, meet with artists, purchase art, and be a part of Aspen's art scene. More at redbrickaspen.com. Locally owned and operated and consistently voted number one for Opre Ski, Highlands Ale House is the local ski bar, serving delicious drinks and comfort food, including pizza, burgers, salads, bowls, and more. Located at the base of Aspen Highlands. Brought to you by Paradise Bakery and Gelateria, serving Aspen for 42 years. White River Overland specializes in camper van upfitting, catering to mountain outdoor enthusiasts. WRO's builds are purpose-driven to enhance skiing, cycling, camping, climbing, and river adventures. WRO is nestled in the White River National Forest in Aspen. Susie's Consignment in Aspen at 600 East Main. Same friendly faces, same great prices, and new items daily. See you at Susie's. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you know. Thanks for sticking with us here this week on the local show, guys. As we work our way into the holidays, we've got some great holiday shows coming up. Lisa and I was going through the schedule again today mm -hmm. on the Wheeler Opera House website and um, incredible shows. And I didn't know if you wanted to start with this weekend, but we've got Handel's Messiah. That's the right. Forty seventh production of Handel's Messiah, the Aspen Choral Society. That's right. I mean, what better way to celebrate Christmas than with the Messiah? Um, it's really exciting. Um, they sound lovely. It's just a beautiful, 
celebration, uh, I think, to really kick off the holiday season. And that's Friday. December 8th. Friday, December 8th. Sunday, December 10th, we have a free family screening of the Polar Express. I saw that, Of the film and our friends at Paradise Bakery. uh, it's It's a collaboration with Aspen Film. It's a free family film that we do every year. Paradise Bakery will have cocoa and cookies for our families. Love it. Um, and then we really hit that, the gas pedal after that. Well, in that show, too, you can bring a toy or food, That's right. right? That's right. Yeah, we encourage people to think about people who may not have as much as they do. Bring food for a, a canned food or dry food for a food drive, a toy for a child who might really appreciate it. Right, so there's free admission, but mm-hmm. it would be great, like, suggested to bring something like that, like a toy or food to help yeah. someone out in need. Right. Okay. I wanted to make sure to get that in because yes, I thought that was you. such a neat component. Yeah, thank you. Of that show. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, then we're kind of moving on to, um, it looks like December 16th mm-hmm. with Mark O'Connor's An Appalachian Christmas, which yes. we touched on this summer. That's right. going to be an amazing show. Yeah. Can you tell us a little more about that one? Yeah, of course. It's Mark O'Connor and his wife, Maggie, both Grammy Award winning musicians. You know, Mark O'Connor is a is a like uh, world-class fiddler. So it's a little bit of bluegrass, a little bit of mountain music. And um, there are traditional Christmas songs that you'll see, that you'll hear. And also he has original compositions. And I think, um, you know, we have the the shades in the Wheeler up now before the show. So you can see outside. You can see the beautiful holiday lights that are up. And I think to, to be able to walk into the Wheeler, see those, to come down so that we can focus on the show when it starts. And sure. then to have Mark and Maggie just making their making their magic, their fiddle magic on stage. And just it's, again, a beautiful way, I think, to, to get into the holiday season. Right. They're grand, both Grammy Award winners. Mm-hmm. So this is some serious talent coming in. Absolutely. Like lining up all these shows. Yes. So that's that's going to get us going there. That's with the, Saturday. With the, with the fiddles. That's Saturday. That's right. The 16th. And then um, we've got Alan Harris and a Nat mm-hmm. King Cole Christmas, which That's is right. also just kind of a classic, you know, yes. Christmas kind of a performance. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that one? Of course. So Alan Harris is a world-class uh, jazz singer based in New York. He has visited Aspen frequently, and uh, he has a Nat King Cole Christmas jazzy celebration. So it will be... Um, it will be Alan and his trio, and then he has a couple of special guests. So huh. Gloria Rubin, who um, many people know from ER, she was is an actress. Right. She left ER to go tour with Tina Turner as a backup singer. Wow. So she's very <laughs> talented. Jeez. And then also joining him is a man named Jumane Smith, who is kind of like Louis Armstrong. That's that's my closest um, comparison. He's a trumpeter. He sings. He's got great charisma. Um, and Alan is and Alan is one of the smoothest jazz voices I've heard. So to hear him sing Christmas songs, and then we get a little action on the trumpet and the jazz trio going. It's it's going to be another great great night. All, you could do two things in one weekend. You can have the quiet Appalachian Christmas, <laughs> and the next night you can come do the jazzy Nat King Cole Christmas. Wow, I love it. Yeah, I like how you hit the variety. So there's mm-hmm. some, really something for everyone. And um, speaking of which, the Changemaker Speaker Series, December 21st, I had that one asterisk Mm because that's the adventure that I'm looking for, which is the Helmsman with um, award-winning photographer Andy Mann. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a great night. So Andy Mann is a National Geographic um, uh, photographer, videographer, and speaker, and he's actually based in Boulder. Nice. He he, um, toured with a show called From Summit to Sea. He does adventure filming at the top of the highest mountains and then he'll go sort of romp with the polar bears and this is a really uh, aspen's the first audience i think to see this particular show because not only does he do all of those things he's a musician and he's put together he's put together a small ensemble it's kind of indie folk music and so the whole evening is going to be great music and great musicianship and these images that he's that he's captured all wow. over the world in his stories. It's called the, you know, the Tale of the Seven Seas. So that's going to be really, I think for people who love adventure and love sort of seeing what, what people can do, this is going to be a great night. God, what an interesting combination. Because mm-hmm. you not only have the imagery, the video, the right. images, but the live music with it. 
That's going to be a really awesome show. Yes, yes. i got to make my way in for that right. show we'll, somehow. We'll, we'll hold a seat for you. We'll, get, we'll have one for you. Good thing I know people yeah. higher up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Dance Aspen, who we featured um, you know, in, the, mm-hmm. in our summer series, has their snowy soiree yes. coming up on the 23rd. Two shows on December 23rd. Two shows which are already sold out. Okay, um, all right. So, well. so we, um, we commissioned Dance Aspen. I said... We'd love for there to be something for children and families. Can you put together a small Christmas show? So for those of you who have tickets, congratulations. Wow. Um, and it's going to be 30 minutes of holiday-themed dance in the way that only Dance Aspen dancers can dance. And then again, more cocoa and cookies. We can't get enough of that Paradise Bakery. <laughs> so more cocoa and cookies and photographs with the dancers um, by our beautiful holiday tree that's in, in the bar lobby. So that's right. Wow. So that's the that's the 23rd. We, we are taking a little break on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, but... But then... Hold on to your hats. On the 27th, the legends of Colorado, uh, especially yeah. Red Rocks, Big Head Todd and the Monsters? Are you kidding me? Big Head Todd and the Monsters in our 500-seat theater. Great thanks to Belly Up, who's a partner with us and co-presenting um, Big Head Todd and another show in the wow. Christmas week. But before Big Head Todd, the day after Christmas, we have Becky Robinson, who, Ooh, is one of, okay, sorry. Yeah, who is one of Aspen's favorite comedians. She was last year with Pete Lee during Laugh Fest... Um, yeah, this last February, and she she loves Aspen as much as Aspen loves her. Um, <laughs> we have virtually sold out the first show, so we've added a late show. So if you've had enough oh of the of the being nice to your family around the holiday table and you're just ready <laughs> to let loose and laugh, come see Becky Robinson on the 26th. I don't know how I missed that. She's in my notes, so that, that's, that's right. the She Gone tour. She Gone. She and Gone. And entitled that's right. Housewife is yes. one of her characters. That's right. On the website, there's a fun little video clip of mm-hmm. her doing her thing, and she is hilarious. Absolutely. That's going to be a super fun night. Right. And then just pace yourself, because then you can come back the next night to see Big Head Talk. Big t- <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. That's right. Wow, those are, those are two monster shows right there. So Becky Robinson and the comedy mm-hmm. on the 26th, Big Head Todd and the Monsters on the 27th. And then from Stray Cats, uh, fresh off their 40th anniversary tour, you've got the founder, Lee mm-hmm. Rocker, from yes. Stray Cats, coming in on December 28th. Can you tell us a little bit about that show? So, yes. Um, you know, uh, Lee is the upright bass, the slap bassist. Right. And, um, the, it's gonna, you're going to hear, hear a lot of rockabilly, but what a lot of people probably don't know about Lee is that he toured with some of the leading artists in rock and roll before he before he began with Stray Cats. So right. there's going to be some video footage of the artists and stories about about his his life as a musician on the road. And then we'll just we'll just hit that rockabilly and he'll be hitting that that upright bass. It seems like a lot of artists. This is just an aside, but take advantage of the intimate nature of the Wheeler mm. to maybe do something a little different. You know, maybe share a little bit more. I mean, do you find that to be true? Like they. Maybe it's just a more intimate, personal kind of an experience for the artists as well. It is. I mean, I've seen uh, many times artists walk out because they we bring them up back of house and then they right. step onto the stage and they see this gorgeous, gorgeous sort of jewel box of a theater. Oh. And it's so intimate that all of a sudden... You know, if you're in an arena, which Big Head Todd or Lee Rocker or, you know, any of these artists are playing to thousands of people at a time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it doesn't even feel like we can fit 500 people in the Wheeler. It feels like, oh, there's just a few hundred here. It, I think it, it just immediately creates this connection between whoever the artist is and the audience because they can see the audience. They can right. immediately feel their energy and right. everything's happening in one space. I mean, it's the it's the magic of live performance, but in the Wheeler, there's something really special about it. I felt it once, and I don't want to talk a lot about this because um, we're limited on time, but I've seen this reggae band Third World a number of times, and when I saw them at the Wheeler, mm-hmm. by the way, reggae was banned after that concert oh. <laughs> <laughs> for certain various reasons, uh, but it turned into a big dance party. Yeah. But the energy was off the charts, mm-hmm. and you could, I mean, everyone got up and just started dancing right away, and it was just, just got a magic about it, you know, and I think that that connection, mm-hmm. the audience to the 
to the artist, the artist to the audience is really special. Yeah. And if someone, you know, especially visitors who haven't been to the Wheeler before, mm -hmm. this is these are amazing opportunities to really feel something different. Yes. Have a different show. It's not just artists cranking through playlists. No. You know, they, they'll take time and, and share, you know, personal stories or stories yeah. about their background. Like John Oates is a classic example of that, mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. who you guys have hosted many times. And yeah. Well, let's keep moving through the schedule because, mm -hmm. I mean, this is amazing. We've got Ozo Motley coming up on December 30th. That's right. From Saturday LA. Night. And yes. they've got that kind of that blend, la urban Latino, hip hop, salsa. Rock. Can you talk a little bit more? Yeah, Ozo Motley's just it, got it going on. That's it gonna be is going to be a hugely high energy show. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're really excited about about bringing them in. I mean, um, it, I've talked to a few different groups about Ozamotli coming. People just perk up. They're so excited. I mean, it's, yeah. again, it, um, not the same as Big Head Top, but the same kind of energy. Like, you're just coming to have a great time with an amazingly talented band. They're, the energy, you know, the roof might lift a little bit on Saturday <laughs> Might feel a little night. bit of bouncing a little, a little bit. bit. Hey, the but roof's listen, kinda... we've done some structural analysis. <laughs> Everything is fine. You're not going to fall through the floor. <laughs> Feel, you'll feel it's safe. Yeah, every time the wheeler's renovated, I'm sure you go through the structural aspects. <laughs> That's you right. want to make sure That's right. it's a solid building. Yes. It can handle these bigger energy shows. That's right. She was built well in 1889, <laughs> and she's uh, still going strong. Unbelievable. And then uh, those have seen the Carbonaro effect on TV, which mm -hmm. I love that show. Mm -hmm. Really a great show. On New Year's Eve, Carbonaro, the magician. Right. Uh, is coming with his show called Lies on Stage. Can Not you live tell us? on stage, lies on lies stage. Lies on stage. <laughs> uh, so we uh, tried this last New Year's Eve and it worked. So we're doing it again where we do a six o'clock show. And so, and it's also family friendly. So we have nice. all ages come. So we do the show at six o'clock. You're out at about 745, just in time to go to Wagner Park and watch the fireworks. Perfect. And, and it's Perfect. great. And it, you know, um, one of the things that works really well for some of the families that come is some of those families then take their kids and have the babysitter come watch the kids. They come back into town and have a great <laughs> time. Or there are others. Some of our, some of us who are a little older, who we say, all right, thanks. It's, it's eight o'clock. My New Year's Eve is done. <laughs> We're good. Or I'm gonna watch. Yeah, you know, it used to be Dick Clark. It's not Dick Clark anymore. <laughs> but you know, Ryan, whoever he is, Times Square. You Ryan Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest. Right. Times Square. That's right. Watch the ball drop. Yeah. I can't even make it. I've mean, I'm just like been napping for an hour or two no, already mid by midnight. It's midnight Eastern time. It's ten o'clock <laughs> here. You can do right. it. <laughs> right. That's perfect. That's so sweet. Um, so that's going to be, what are the best, I guess, tips? Because now we're seeing some of these shows are selling out. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are a couple ticket uh, tips for tips, tickets? Uh, get <laughs> ticket your ti tips. Get your tickets now. <laughs> yeah, get them now. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we've really done consciously this fall is to announce these shows early so yeah. that our locals can understand what's coming and they can buy tickets. Right. And we know that in the week between Christmas and New Year, there are so many visitors and they're looking for things to do. And what we want is to know that everybody that's a local has had their advanced chance to right. get the seats they want and to make sure they can be at the Wheeler. And if you're only here for the week, I hope you get a chance to get a ticket, but you might not. Big Head Todd, we probably only have a couple of hundred seats left. It's already more than half sold. Yeah. The Dance Aspen the show, Snowy Swell Ray are both sold out. So it it is really get your tickets soon. AspenShowTix.com. Yep, you can go to the Wheeler the Opera House, uh, WheelerOperaHouse.com or AspenShowTix.com, and both of those can take you to the page where you can buy tickets. Our box office is open from noon until 5, uh, Tuesday through Saturday. Okay. Very friendly folks sitting at those at those windows to help you, too. It's always fun. I always have fun. It sounds weird to say, but to go to the box office, you always see, like, friends you know. It's a social little spot mm -hmm. there's a kind of an informational that's right area Acre has there. a little exactly a little table there's there. a little of the energy going on in there yeah and what about seating i don't know if you're allowed mm -hmm. to say what would be your preferred seating but do you have any tips on where to sit at the wheeler uh, uh, or it's i know it's all good but. it's all there's not a bad scene the wheeler. <laughs> I, you know i have i have gotten a lot of feedback over the last few years since i started people love sitting in the balcony at the front yeah. of the balcony because it gives them kind of that bird's eye view and again the that. balcony is not that far from the stage so lots of people like to sit in the balcony near the front yeah. um i think that because it's so small i, I mean I, I don't even know how far the for this seat is from the stage 50 feet it's not that it's, it's not, not that far 
but yeah, the, the balconies usually hop in. We open the balcony after we've sold about 250 seats on the floor. We always want it to feel um, intimate for the people who are there, so we wait for that threshold. So sometimes the balcony doesn't open until after other seats have been sold. I love it up there in the balcony. Now, this is a question for my mom. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> she's no longer with us, but she taught us early on, we sneak in our popcorn to the movies. Don't do that. Don't do that at the Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> and especially don't so try to sneak So you just answered my your... question before I even got it all out. <laughs> don't don't, <laughs> don't sneak your do beer in either. <laughs> no sneaking in beer. No sneaking in popcorn. No sneaking in like full dinners like my girlfriend and I used to do at the ISIS. We'd sit up above, yeah. and we'd have our dinner, kind of a little Tupperware and a little beverage, and you know, but not so much because not you, so guys, much. you guys have plenty of. We uh, have a beautiful bar. Yeah. Our friends at Escobar are running the bar <laughs> operations at the Wheeler. We have <laughs> snacks. We have everything you might want to drink. I have a personal um, thing about popcorn in the theater because you have no idea oh. how hard it is oh to clean it up. Right. Um, but you can. But we have snacks you can take in and and a full bar. So yeah, please yeah. eat your popcorn in the box office lobby. <laughs> get your drink at the bar, and then you can. And you know, if you want a bag of pretzels or a Snickers bar, you can take those up into the theater. And we and we touched on this. We gotta we gotta wrap it up. But uh -huh. um, so real quick, I mean, what are the what are the key ingredients that create that magic? We kind of talk about mm -hmm. the intimate nature, mm -hmm. the acoustics, the history, yeah. the ambiance. Mm -hmm. And you can you talk a little bit about the magic of the Wheeler? I think the magic of the Wheeler is in our audience because yeah. people who go to the Wheeler, they come a little bit with a, a little bit of a reverence. Like this is this is a special place. Right. And they know that the people they're gonna see on stage are gonna feel it's as special as they are. And the audience I think feels a real pride in this is like welcome to the Wheeler. Like there are ambassadors too. Right. And it's just something about being in a very small space with that art going on that's that you can't match it anywhere else i mean people have to experience the wheeler if they really want to experience aspen it's such a local gem i baked you uh, a dozen oh cookies just as a small token of my appreciation so thank you and i know my staff will thank you too <laughs> we have a meeting tomorrow I'll, I'll hand them all out that's really kind of you well this is my pleasure eric's organic chocolate chunk mm-hmm and that's it. Yeah, I didn't add anything else. But I, hopefully right. that's all you need. That's all we need. We have some nut chunks allergies, are bigger than so this chips. is perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Chunks, yes. Lisa, thanks for joining oh, thank us today. You, Eric. It's I hope you had pleasure. fun. Yeah, every time. Thank you so much. Thank you again. And thank you guys above all for watching this week on The Local Show. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Join the string beans in helping reduce food waste in our community. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Ask for smaller portions in restaurants. Take home leftovers to eat later. Donate unopened food to our food bank. Let's work in concert to reduce food waste. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School and snowshoeing specialists since 1996. Welcome to